boat trailer right now is set up for a 12 foot aluminum boat. So the boat trailer, the boat I'm putting on the trailer now is 14 feet. So if you're careful when you buy your trailers and make the, a lot of these trailers are adjustable. So you can have them fit more than one boat. But not all trailers. So keep that in mind uh, when you're purchasing a boat trailer. This piece is adjustable, the axle is adjustable, the widths are adjustable on the, on the deck itself. So when you're buying a boat trailer, just something to keep in mind. I bought this boat trailer brand new in 1989. It has many, many boats on it over the years. Right now, it's getting a 14-foot aluminum. The marsh squash. Everything about this trailer is adjustable. This piece here will go down. You can see holes for it. This is a great trailer for fitting many, many boats. Well, good morning. I've got moved up to the cabin this morning. This will be uh, part three. It'll also be the last uh, series on uh, bringing this boat back, at least for right now. Uh, my plan today is to do the finishing touches on this boat. Uh, hopefully I'll get it done today. If not, I'll get it done tomorrow. And then after that, uh, we will be headed up in the swamp to catch a, a bunch of chubs, hopefully 10 or 12 inches long. So if you want to see how I catch the big Lakers, uh, stick along for this uh, series here. Like I said, we're going to go get chubs tomorrow, and then we're going to go fish a new lake. Uh, hopefully the day after tomorrow. So we'll see how it plays out. But it's a lake I've never fished. I, I needed a smaller boat because it's a crappy boat landing. And that's where the uh, marsh squash comes in. I purchased this boat, done a little series to show you how to turn it into a lake trout fishing boat. But right now it's setting in a utility trailer. I'm getting ready to lift it out of that utility trailer and put it on a boat trailer. So thanks a lot for coming along. I hope you enjoy this little series. And with any luck, uh, when we're finished, I can not only show you a reasonable boat for uh, lake trout fishing, but maybe show you a couple of tips on how to catch a lake trout. So thank you and come along and let's have some fun with this.
Well, I've got the 14-foot uh, aluminum uh, installed on the trailer. I've addressed, adjusted the uh, front piece there to fit that boat for that trailer, as I showed earlier. I've got the 8 Hoss Johnson installed. That's a 8 uh, Hoss uh, 1989 Johnson motor. I bought that brand new, uh, $970 or something like that back in 89. It's been a great motor. It has not been on the back of a boat in probably, I'd say, 15 years. Uh, but what I do do with it is I start it once a season. I let it run in a 55-gallon drum of water, and that's how I keep it uh, running smoothly. And the other thing I do is I add uh, fuel stabilizer to my fuel, Marine. Uh, that's the one I think works the best. I add about a half an ounce to five gallons of gas in absolutely everything that I run from lawnmowers to generators to four wheelers absolutely everything gets fuel stabilizer and the other thing I do is when I'm done using it at the end of a trip is I run it out of fuel uh, right there at the boat landing I think that makes a huge difference especially with this motor there is a vent tube on the inside of the carburetor that if you don't take care of it by running it out of fuel, uh, that little vent, vent hole will uh, clog up on you and then she won't run right the next trip. That's the other beauty in having a motor for many years. <laughs> you know it's little quirks, uh, quirks. So, but anyways, I'm just rambling. Uh, I like how that boat looks on the trailer. And next year, or later on this summer, I will be painting the uh, whole thing hunter green. Uh, right now, the repairs that I am making are just to get it in the water uh, so that I can go fishing. Right now is Laker season, and that is the only thing that's on my table at this point. So let's get this boat in the water. I'm anxious to take you fishing to my lake. <laughs> Thanks a lot for coming along. Well, if you remember back in part two, I was talking about a plate for my uh, downrigger. <laughs> There it is. It was hanging on a nail inside my shop up here. This plate slides into here and that's how it attaches to the boat. That way you can take this thing off and on uh, when you're traveling or just plain to get it out of the boat when it's in storage. But anyway, so right now I'm going to bolt this on uh, roughly right about in here. So thank you and I will see you in just a few minutes. Well, welcome back. I've got the downrigger installed now. I installed it with uh, quarter inch stainless steel bolts with a lock washer and a nut. And I've also got my rear uh, boat cleat installed now. What this is for is sometimes when I am white perch fishing, the conditions are really calm and I'll drop my anchor off the back of the boat just because it's easier for me to retrieve it when I'm fishing by myself. But the other reason is sometimes this, this cable with your ball on it, if you're running a canning ball, will get hung up on bottom. And sometimes if you wrap the cable around it, you might be able to get it free. Uh, that doesn't happen, it doesn't work very well. But it's there if I need it. I can wrap my cable around it. I can cut the cable uh, if I need to uh, while fishing, if I do get hung up on bottom. So just, and, and as well as tie off the back of the boat. I have a cleat on the front of the boat, and I got a cleat back here, so I could tie to a dock pretty easily. I could run some uh, boat bumpers pretty easily. Uh, so that's why I installed the cleat. But this turned out really nice, so now I am moving on to uh, installing the seat that I will set in. And then once I get the seat installed, then I can install the depth finder. And I'll show you the depth finder here in a little while. It's an eagle. It came off one of the boats that I bought three years ago for, for two hundred dollars. The first thing I did was uh, take the thing off, take the depth finder off it. I had no idea if it would work or not. Um, I got it in the shop. I hooked it up to a battery. It works great. So that's what's going to get installed in here. So I kind of look at that depth finder as a little freebie for this boat because when I bought the other boat, I was buying it for the boat and the trailer not necessarily the depth finder. Um, it's a 1971 Starcraft that I bought, which is my retirement boat, and I paid uh, $200 for that boat. 
So I'm looking forward to showing you that boat as well. But right now I'm on to my seat. Well, welcome back. It's the next morning. I did as much as I could do yesterday, but ran out of gas and just ran out of time. Uh, so I'll finish this up today. Um, as I left off yesterday, the downrig is in. Uh, I'm hoping you can see this. I've got the uh, depth finder installed along with my little uh, workbench here. I uh, keep my fishing tackle here, loose stuff, whatever, coffee cup, all that. Uh, here, I think you can see it. I've got my uh, fish pole holder on here. And I also, I'll point the camera down. I, I built a small battery box uh, to house my... Uh, I have a lawnmower battery in here, and that's what I run the uh, depth finder on, as well as I have a light on the bow, and I, ha and I will have a stern light. Uh, the lights won't be hooked up for this trip. I'm basically just getting the boat ready uh, for fishing. Right there, you can see uh, how I've installed my uh, fish pole holders. A oh, little too much. And I got one on the gunnel. Uh, there's the uh, depth finder, the little table. Probably can't see down there in the corner. I've built a small box for the battery box. I have raised up the seat there. I hope you can see it. I've raised up the seat so that I can have my fish pole holders. The ends of my rods slide right in that little gap. Plus it raises up my seat so I'm more comfortable uh, sitting in the captain's chair there. I have my depth founder ins installed. Battery box. Everything's ready to go. Uh, downrigger over there. The kind of fishing that I do on bottom is kind of rough. So... Uh, I have it chained to the boat just in case we have a problem and if we spin around I can show you the front I didn't use to uh, videotape for YouTube so this is a new feature for my boat is a place to stand the tripod for the camera and I've got a cooler of ice up there this time of year you definitely got to put your fish on ice the fishnet over there does the same thing, slides back, slides into a little pocket under my seat to keep it stationary. For this year, I will be painting it later on in the season, but for right now, it's finished and ready to go fishing. The boat trailer, all the tires have been blowed up, put a little air in them. I have uh, greased all the both, the both the wheel bearings, so the wheel bearings shouldn't be an issue. This trailer has been sitting for a couple of years. But I don't think it'd be a problem anyways. I have lubricated the gear on the winch for hauling the boat in. All that stuff is just routine maintenance. But if you don't take care of it uh, when you need it, it won't be there for you. So the boat's ready. Now I just got to throw in some life jackets, tackle boxes, and I will be headed out fishing tomorrow. This is going to wrap this little series up. And tomorrow I will start another series. It's going to be on that new lake. I will bring you along so you can discover the lake at the same time that I discover it. I have never fished it, I have never put a boat in it, as well as uh, just plain knowing good water and good depths and all that stuff. How to take on a new body of water and see if we can catch fish out of it. So you have a good day and I will see you on the next one. I hope you follow along putting this boat in the water and we will have fun with it. So, 